We chose the e-commerce industry and the company Amazon. The reason why we chose Amazon is because it is known as one, one of the market leaders in its industry. Amazon has shown rapid growth in its industry and that plays a significant role in the marketplace as well as showing how big of a competitor they are in the market with high demand in the current state of the world. Some software required in order to create a website or application would be a programming language like JavaScript, Python, or C++, and a text editor like HTML along with it. Using the HTML editor makes programming the website or application more convenient since it can recognize different sorts of coding languages as well as easily detecting any programming errors before launching the program itself. A text editor like Adobe Photoshop should also be used as it allows Amazon to edit and create their logo and illustration works for their website and or application. A file transfer protocol would then also be needed in order to transfer files and supporting images and graphics to Amazon's web server. Some hardware required in order to create a website or application would first and foremost be a computer as it is a vital tool in order to create any website. It is important that the computer has at least a minimum of 4GB of RAM but preferably having more is always good. An i5 or i7 processor and at least a terabyte of storage is also needed so that the computer will be able to run the website smoothly and without trouble. The higher the specifications, the better of course. A server computer can also be used instead to host Amazon's website so that it is guaranteed that the website is up and running all the time for anyone who wants to use it. Amazon can either do this manually with a computer or use a web hosting service which is more convenient than the former. System Development Lifecycle, or known as SDLC, is the application of business practices that is used to build software applications. This method consists of 6 to 8 steps and will be shown in next slide. And shown in next slide, there are 6 here which I will go in depth starting with investigation. The phase of investigation is the initial stage where problems have occurred in the system and will be made easy to understand and be able to solve. To this phase, it will help improve the system to become more efficient in its development. Analysis, the secondary stage, functions to evaluate the problems that were found during the investigation stage. The current system will be examined and data will be collected to be used as a foundation to produce their ideal project goals. For design, once the analysis is complete, the plans are laid out for one to be chosen as the optimal plan with high success rate. And the goal of this stage is to get a clearer picture of what the application is going to be like concerning with the project restraints such as budget, time and good design approach. For construction, these steps that are shown below, building code, data migration and unit testing are going to be used to minimize development costs by optimizing the resources and avoiding unnecessary avoidable mistakes. For building code, Programming platforms like Python, Objective-C, and Java programming language aid developers to create a general program source code, which is essential in order to begin the base functionality of the software application. For data migration, this step ensures to test the transfer of files from the old system to be readily be used in the new system. And lastly, for unit testing, this step ensures that each unit of the system is executed just as it was programmed to do. And for the next phase for testing, there will be three stages, which is integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. And this testing will be a level of advanced testing done in a special environment to avoid any disturbances from outside. Starting off with integration testing, it's a test to focus on the interfaces of the system. For example, how does the login page link with the home page of Facebook? For system testing, this level of testing evaluates the whole system which includes the data, hardware and software to test any irregularities in the system. 
And last, for exceptions testing, this test focuses on the purpose to evaluate the compliance of the system with the business requirements and determines if this system is capable and fits the criteria of the organizations using it. For the last phase, implementation begins after the system is confirmed to be able to run after adequate and proper testing. It will be released to the public as a beta version for users that are using it to be able to test and give any feedback if there are any issues or bugs with the problem and the development team will fix it. And this whole cycle will repeat ongoing and this phase will be completed after all requirements have been filled in the organization's goals. We start by comparing the different amount of users using the websites Taobao and Amazon. Amazon started around 1995 as an online bookstore and Taobao started around 1999. Amazon had a head start and is still more dominating as an online e-commerce website compared to Taobao. Amazon users are generally from the United States, North America and etc. Taobao users are generally from China or Asia. The comparison between the two users of the website are as stated in the graph. A whopping 70 to 30 percent ratio. Amazon is much bigger compared to Taobao as it started earlier and generally is well more known in the Western industry. Amazon and Taobao are two big online e commerce websites dominating their respective countries. Language barrier does come into play when using these websites. The difference between both of them is that Amazon uses English the main language for most people to communicate with and Taobao uses Mandarin where only the Asia side would understand. Navigating the websites would be hard if you don't understand the language and even communicating with the sellers would be a problem as their mother language would be the language from the website's respective origin countries. One more difference I find very interesting is the usage of the search bar in both websites. Amazon search bar has the ability to search in English and returning the result within seconds. Taobao has the ability to search in English and Mandarin, which I find very interesting, but you can search in English and the results will come back to you in Mandarin. Another cool thing about Taobao is that the search bar has an addition called virtual search, where it allows the user to insert an image to the website using an image to return results. I find this very useful as I can just take a picture of what I have or what I have found online and just use it as a reference for Taobao to help me find the product that I'm looking for. The biggest similarity I can personally see for both websites is that they use GPS, also known as Global Positioning System, very effectively. Even though both websites has different currencies, US dollars for Amazon, and Taiwanese dollar for Taobao. They use the device's GPS to locate the user's address. And using the address, they find the general country that they're in. Through that, they will exchange the currency that they have, Taiwanese dollars to, for example, since I'm from Malaysia, they'll change it to Malaysian Ringgit. And from USD to Malaysian Ringgit as well. This, I find extremely helpful for a user as it would ease the process of changing and searching the currency exchange rate. During this research, we have discovered a few improvements that Amazon may consider in order to improve their customer service. There are four improvements that we would like to propose. An upgraded user interface design, allow users to sign up using single sign-on SSO authentication, a live chat feature to connect with sellers, and a two-factor authenticator or an advanced filtering system. Firstly, Amazon uses an old-fashioned clunky user interface on its website. Besides that, Amazon's webpage is cluttered with information. Although they may have tremendous contents, their layout is unorganized, and it makes it hard for users to navigate. Therefore, Amazon should come up with a new and improved appealing user interface design to ensure a better experience for the buyers. Buyers would undoubtedly find it more appealing and would browse all day. Here is an example of redesigned concepts of Amazon. 
Secondly, instead of having to create an account merely to use the app or website, an improvement Amazon could take into consideration is to allow users to sign up using other existing login methods. Users may have difficulty signing in and leaving the website due to password fatigue, having to recall dozens of passwords for their personal use. Hence, Amazon should allow users to sign up using a single sign-on SSO authentication to avoid this problem. If you're wondering what SSO is, here is a perfect example. As you can see on the screen, without SSO, you need multiple accounts to log in. Whereas with SSO, you will only need an account. Thirdly, Amazon should add a live chat feature to allow buyers to connect with the sellers. As we all know, when browsing for products on Amazon, sellers may include false information that does not relate to the product on a page. This can make it tough for the user to trust the seller and the website. Therefore, Amazon can improve its customer service by implementing a live chat feature to make it a much more pleasing experience for users while browsing on its website. And finally, the last improvement Amazon may consider implementing is a two-factor authenticator or an advanced filtering system to ensure that there are no fake reviews or fake sellers on the platform. Fake reviews on product listings should be filtered by Amazon because they may potentially mislead users. Fake reviews have the potential to harm a seller's reputation as well as their business. If fake reviews are discovered, they can harm the seller's credibility and the customer will less likely purchase from them in the future. Hence, Amazon should implement a two-factor authenticator or a filter system to guarantee that every review on the application is genuine. When using Amazon, there are many ethical issues users should be concerned with, as Amazon is a company with substantial risk of fraud. Participant privacy invasion is one of the ethical issues that should be concerned. Now, take a look at this video. Oh well, what's this fishy email? Do I know this bank? How did they get my information? Ever gotten fake emails from random companies and not knowing how they got your information? This is where users should be concerned about participant privacy invasion. It is important to protect users' information such as not revealing information and identity via data breaches. For example, when a user is browsing the web, they shouldn't be forced to give out personal information. Next, we have web tracking. Have you ever faced getting multiple pop-up ads while browsing the web? That's because websites collect multiple information from users. This, however, is considered a breach of personal privacy because valuable information can be collected by third-party websites without the user's permission. For instance, when a user visits a first-party website, he or she will input personal information, which is then used by third-party cookies. Third-party websites can buy personal information and track your movements through tracking software and cookie analysis. He just visited our site. Go track him down now. Here are third-party cookies. Take it. Lastly, keeping information confidential is important. Especially when users check out to make a payment, they are required to input information such as their identity card number, credit card number, and other banking information. When a user is completing a payment transaction, it is important that their anonymity is protected online. To give an example for this, watch this clip. Should I reveal their identity online? No, I should not do this. Confidentiality and anonymity is crucial. That marks the end of our video. We hope you learned a thing or two about Amazon. Thank you for tuning in.